We're with Kiri, David, and Heather Jewell, and here is Juanita on the toll-free in Springdale, Arkansas. Hello. Hi, Tom. Good Great evening, Juanita. Thank Thanks. you for joining our show tonight. Been a fan for years. Thank you. I'd like to um, ask Juanita, first of all, I'm just, I hope she's doing very well, and I wish her the best of luck, her and her family, and their healing process. But I'd also like to not know if there was any um, it, incidents of domestic violence. I mean, I realize physical violence and sexual violence is, is all part of, but there seems to be uh, a lot of the same elements and dynamics in what she's explaining as what there is in battering households. Right, and you can't ask Juanita because that's your name. You have to ask Kiri, okay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. It happens all the time. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, she wants to know if there was any uh, uh, domestic violence between, between uh, adults in the compound. Um, just David Crush and the other adults, um, I remember one time he spanked him, like the men, he spanked him, I don't remember what for though, with a big boat oar, um, like big men, he spanked him, but I don't remember why. And they didn't protest, they accepted this as some kind of punishment due them from yeah. Mr. Chorus. But nothing between men and women where men no. would batter women, no. abuse them in any Never. way, nothing, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. but when, was that the thrust of your question, Juanita? Did, he, did David Koresh actually physically batter other people? I mean, that sounds, I mean, I guess that answers my question with the men in the paddle, right. but, you know, that could also be another perversion as well. If, if I... Yeah, go, go ahead, please. In the process of... Um, putting our, our custody hearing together, we were offered and, and received a great deal of information from uh, former Branch Davidians in the form of sworn affidavits that were provided to the court. And the abuse that took place, uh, as described to us in those affidavits, was, was almost endless. There were children who were beaten uh, as young as eight years old until their buttocks bled. There were, um, there was, I have the testimony of one woman who is actually, as difficult as this may be to believe, she was held captive for a period of three months. And during that period of time, she was systematically raped and beaten by a Branch Davidian who is uh, now a survivor of the fire. He was not there at the time and is, in fact, uh, occasionally appearing on national television shows. Juanita, I'm glad you called. Thank you for your questions and thanks for watching our program. Thank you. It's my pleasure. How did you... Uh, uh, get custody of Kiri. What, what, what did you do? Kiri, and you can both talk about this, you know. Sure, Kiri was um, coming, uh, we, we first got information about, that, that really filled out the picture about the specific abuse that was going on involving Kiri and others on uh, Halloween of 1991. And at that time, Kiri was already scheduled to come for a visitation on the 28th of December, a, a, a Christmas holiday visit. And there was no problem with that? I mean, Chorus would let her out. And, and well, at that time, Kiri was, was principally living in California. There was a, woman, a women's house and a, and a man, men's house uh, in California in two separate cities. Okay. And they would travel back and forth between right. Waco. So, yes, she was, she was allowed to go because really she had to. What they wanted to do was uh, appease people as much as they could on the outside to make things appear as normal as possible. Mm -hmm. Even if it was just for a couple of weeks, that was fine. They could let her go. I understand. But we had just been married when we got this phone call in October for two months. And we knew something wasn't right, <clears throat> excuse me, with Sherry and Kiri. I mean, where they were, the situation they were in. But we, like David said, couldn't pinpoint it. So this helped us put it all together. <clears throat> we knew we had to do something. Um, we knew from Mark Bro that we could not just go down there and get her because the place was surrounded. It was a, a literal compound, and that if we tried to go get her, we would, we would be killed. Did, did, did you talk to Korish at all? Yes, I did. But not during this time. Not during that time. No, but, was... what, what, but when you did talk to him, what, what was it like being on the phone with him? David Koresh was the definition of the word charismatic. Really? I was raised in an extremely fundamentalistic Christian home. Um, the Bible was the word of law, and I have never encountered anyone who knew the Bible uh, in terms of being able to quote it like David Koresh did. He could find a text in the Bible and quote it to you on a second's notice and justify anything that he happened to say. Mm -hmm. And David Koresh and I were actually raised in the same religious out of the same church and so he understood the teachings that I had come from and 
in one particular conversation, he, um, he said, now David, you understand that in the end of time, God's people will be persecuted for their faith. And you've heard about the death penalty that will be imposed on, on God's true people, haven't you? I said, yes, I have. Um, he brought this up because I had challenged him about his need to surround himself with weapons and guards and fences and why is all this necessary. Yeah, and were, were you aware of all the weapons and stuff? Did you know that there were guns? Yeah. And, and did that strike you as odd? No. Really? Yeah. So. Well, what he indicated to me in that, uh, in that conversation, what he actually said was that when the wicked came to destroy him and his followers, that they were prepared to shoot back and kill them. Yeah, and did he ever uh, uh, talk to you about maybe coming and joining the compound? Yes. Yes, he did. In fact, I would have to confess that, uh, uh, and Kiri is probably not aware of this, but at one point I actually came very, very close to packing my bags and going down and um, doing join, whatever it took. Jo jo joining up. To join, with yeah. my, to join with my daughter. And, and why would you think it would be normal to have guns and security? Because federal agents were going to come and kill us one day, and we were prepared. What do you think happened the day that the raid took place on the compound? Do you think the federal agents went to that compound and killed people? Oh, I'm sure they killed people, but they were also killed. Um, it's inevitable that if there's shooting going on, somebody's going to die. Um, the day of the fire, I think that the Branch Davidians committed suicide, if that's what you're asking. That's what I'm asking. Yes. You, you, you believe that the Branch Davidians set the fire, yes. not the FBI, no. and not the Bureau of Alcohol and Firearms. No. Okay. Let me pause here for a commercial. We'll continue with uh, Kiri, David, and Heather, and you on the phone as time permits after these messages. His body is pure energy. With everything we know about science, what happened in that classroom is impossible. His mind is pure genius. What are you doing? You really think you can be like us? His story. Do you think I'm ugly? I think you're the most beautiful face I've ever seen. Is pure wonder. Powder. Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, October 27th. Another town, another show. Wake up on the bus, but that's life on the road. Though the morning is bright, it still feels like last night. Mountain grown folders to prove that a roam pulls me through. So wherever I roam, it always brings me home. The best part of waking up is folders in your it's color printing, and it's state-of-the-art. It's flyers. It's proposals. It's Crayola and Hallmark Connection software. And putting your very own logo on a t-shirt. So it's not business as usual. It's what you can do with a new Canon Color Bubble Jet printer. Canon, what can you do? I am the picture of health. I'm low-cal and high-fiber. I'm homogenized and pasteurized. I'm fat-free. So how come I still feel like... On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. How about a hot romance? I was in heaven. What really goes on behind the scenes? <laughs> Secrets of Romance Novels on 48 Hours Thursday. Originally, Tennessee Williams' A Streetcar Named Desire was censored for its sexual content. Sunday, CBS presents an uncut, uncensored production starring Oscar winner Jessica Lange, Alec Baldwin, Diane Lane, and John Goodman. A Streetcar Named Desire, as shocking today as it ever was. Yep, I'm off to your party. Yep, got the address and phone number. 
in my pocket. Can't get to the number? No problem. Get back that line. Press star 69. Call return gets back the last call you received. No need to subscribe. Uh, could I have that address? Again? Get back that line. Press star 69 from 9X. 75 cents per use plus cost of call. The makers of rice aroni bring you another San Francisco treat. Pastoroni, a San Francisco treat. Pastoroni, all the choices can't be beat. Pastoroni, delicious pasta and sauce combinations from fettuccine alfredo to angel hair parmesan to pasta shells and cheddar sauce. Pastoroni can't be beat. Pastoroni, a San Francisco treat. From rice aroni.